Hello and welcome to the video solution of the exercise problem Judy vs. Lander Bittiger. In this problem, we consider a wire of length L and with W in a two dimensional electron system. In the classical Jude diffusive picture of the wire, the wire conductance GD is given by the ratio of the wire with W divided by the wire length L and the product of the electron sheet density NS, the elementary charge squared, the scattering time tau, and all of this is finally divided by the effective mass m star. In the quantum mechanical landauer bütiger frame framework, the conductance of the wire is given by the product of the conductance quantum, E squared over H, and the number of modes, the number of occup occupied modes in the wire, as well as the average, average transmission of each mode T. Now what we want to do in this exercise is to compare these two expressions for the two conductances and derive a relation between the scattering time tau and the average transmission t. So we are looking for a way to connect this quantity t, which is the classical scattering time, with this transmission t, which is a quantum mechanical quantity. Now, before we start, um, let us take a look at some useful formulas and expressions we are going to need to solve the problem. So the first expression relates Planck's quantum with a reduced Planck's quantum. They are the same up to a factor of 2 pi. The next two expressions relate the, the Fermi wave number kf, the Fermi wavelength lambda f, and the Fermi velocity vf. These expressions should be familiar to you. The final expression relates the Fermi wave number kf and the electron sheet density ns. The electron sheet density ns can be expressed as the square of the Fermi wave number divided by 2 pi. This expression is only valid in a two-dimensional system and assuming a parabolic dispersion relation. Also, uh, for the sake of completeness, this formula here for the conductance in the landau bittiger model is only valid in the limit of zero temperature. So, let us begin. We may write the resistance in the landau bittiger model as the inverse of the conductance Now we insert the expression written above. And now what we want to do is to split this expression into two parts. We accomplish this in the following way. So what we have done now, and I have missed a minus one sign over here, is just to rewrite the resistance into a sum of two parts. And this sum of two parts we can treat essentially as a series connection of two other resistances, the first of them being given by this term, which we call the contact resistance, RLBC, and a second term which we call the wire resistance. Now um, the, um, the wire resistance depends on the transmission T of the wire. When the transmission goes to 1, as is the case in an ideal wire, this term goes to 0, which is intuitively clear. If the transmission, on the other hand, goes to 0, then this term diverges. Again, this is in accordance with our expectations. If we consider the, the first term, the first term does not depend on the transmission T, but only on the number of modes M. This expression is called the contact resistance because it's, it is 
non-zero, even in the case of a perfect wire, meaning when t goes to 1, since um, that arises due to inelastic relaxation in the contacts. That's why this term is referred to as the contact resistance. Now, uh, moving on, we want to rewrite the number of modes m in the wire um, in terms of the wire width w and the Fermi wavelength lambda f. We do this with the following expression. So m, the number of modes, is equal to 2 times the wire width divided by half the Fermi wavelength. So this term here, the width divided by half the Fermi wavelength, it gives the number of modes, and then this additional factor of 2 stems from the spin degeneracy. So here we have assumed that uh, both spin directions, are spin up and spin down, are equivalent, and therefore there is an additional factor of 2 for the total number of modes. All right, so then we can insert this expression for the total number of modes into the slender vertical resistance. Now, from now on, we will only focus on the wire resistance, neglecting the contact resistance. What we want to do is, we want to manipulate this term here with a series of transformations in order to arrive to a term which is comparable to the Drude resistance or to the Drude conductance equivalently. Now I have written the corresponding steps over here. So what we do is we, we insert, as I already mentioned, this expression for the number of modes into the wire resistance and then we obtain this expression over here. So you can see that now there is the, the width w and the Fermi wavelength lambda f in the wire resistance. Again, I repeat, we are now only focusing on the wire resistance and leaving the contact resistance as is. Moving on, we can now express the Fermi wavelength lambda f in terms of the Fermi wave number kf by using this expression over here. So you can see that this lambda f now is replaced by 2 pi over kf. Then we can rewrite exactly the same expression but multiply both numerator and denominator by an additional kf. So here we have written an additional kf but also divided by kf. So we have essentially just multiplied by the constant 1 leaving the original expression unchanged. The advantage of this manipulation, however, is that now we can associate this here, 2 pi over kf squared, with the electron sheet density ns. So therefore, we can rewrite this expression in terms of kf and ns. So now we are almost finished. The the last remaining manipulation, or the second last, is to replace this wave number kf in terms of the Fermi velocity vf using this expression over here. Then we arrive to the following expression, which contains a prefactor, which is very similar to the inverse of this Drude conductance. So this is very similar to the Drude resistance, but it contains some additional terms. Now, to really have the Drude resistance in this expression, what we do is we multiply by the length and divide by the length at the same time so that the two terms cancel each other, as well as doing the same, team, as the same thing with the scattering time tau. Um, then we can associate this prefactor here with the Drude resistance. So this is now the full Drude resistance as given here, just the inverse of the of the conductance, times another factor. Now this factor over here, if we compare the, this wire resistance with the Drude resistance, should be equal to 1. 
So what we want now is to set this factor to 1. In that case, the wire resistance of the from, or let me put it this way, from the quantum mechanical Landau Brittaker model is equal to the resistance from the classical Duda model. That is true if this term is 1. Therefore, we write that pi times the Fermi velocity times the scattering time tau divided by twice the wire length multiplied by 1 minus the average mode transmission divided by the mode transmission is equal to 1. Now we can introduce, as is suggested in the exercise sheet, the concept of the mean free path, LE. LE is given by the product of the Fermi velocity and the scattering time tau. Now if we replace the Fermi velocity with the mean free path and solve this equality for the mean free path, we see that the mean free path is given by twice the wire length divided by pi multiplied by t over 1 minus t. Now let us make a small drawing of the dependence of the mean free path LE on the average mode transmission T. As we know, the transmission is a probability, so it goes from 0 to 1. If the transmission is 0, we see that the mean free path also goes to 0. This makes sense intuitively, because if the transmission of the wire is 0, then Equivalently, in the, Drude, in, the, in the classical picture, in the Druda picture, we would expect the mean free path also to go to zero. On the other hand, if the transmission goes to one, then we are talking about an ideal wire, and the mean free path diverges to infinity. So if we were to draw the dependence of the mean free path on the transmission, it would look something like this. Now, finally, let us touch upon the question on how the mean free path depends on the impurity density. So, now I'm going to refer to chapter 11.8 in the book Semiconductor Nanostructures by Thomasine. Um, in this chapter, we find an expression which relates the overall or the average transmission to the number of scatterers or impurities in the wire and the transmission of an individual scatterer. So I will now reproduce this expression here. One minus T over T is given by N. N is the number of scatterers in the wire or the number of impurities times the average of 1 minus ti over ti. Now ti is again a transmission, but now it's the transmission of an individual scatterer and not the transmission of the whole wire, which was t. Note that these brackets denote an average. Now if we take this expression, what it tells us essentially is that the transmission, the overall transmission T through the wire depends inversely on the number of scatterers in the wire. So th again, this is quite an intuitive finding. So the larger the number of scatterers in the wire, the lower the transmission in the wire will be. If we take this expression and insert it here, we can express the mean free path in terms of the number of scatterers in the wire. Additionally, we can introduce a density of scatterers in the wire, 
which is just given by the total number of scatterers in the wire divided by the wire length L. So if we take now these two expressions and insert them, into the expression for the mean free path, we can write the mean free path as 2 over pi multiplied by the inverse scatter density multiplied by this average over here, more precisely its inverse. So now we clearly see that the mean free path is inversely proportional to the density of scatterers in the wire. So to conclude, we have found a way to write the resistance in the landau bertiger picture as a series connection of two resistances, one of which is the contact resistance, which remains even in the case of an ideal wire, and the second, which is the so-called wire resistance. Then we have neglected the contact resistance and tried to find a way to compare the wire resistance with the classical Druder resistance through a series of manipulations, which to be frank, don't involve much physics, but ultimately lead us um, to a nice conclusion, namely um, that we can rewrite the contact the wire resistance as the Druder resistance multiplied by some prefactor. In order for the two resistances, the lander particular wire resistance and the Druder resistance to be the same, this prefactor has to be 1. And based on this, we have been able to derive an expression which relates the classical mean free path with the quantum mechanical transmission. Additionally, by using this result over here, and by introducing the density of scatterers and i, we've been able to rewrite this expression also in terms of the transmission of individual of an individual scatterer ti and the total density of scatterers and i. Note that the approximation um, that we are neglecting the contact resistance is um, is valid if there is a sufficient number of scatterers in the wire and that the contribution and when the contributions of these individual scatterers are combined incoherently. So for more details, I refer to chapter 11.8 of the book Semiconductor Nanostructures since this derivation here is essentially reproduced there but in more detail.